It's a Bedouin nose job. I would have gone. I yet to be it. And so much less expensive, I'm sure. I'm Paula Froelich. Take a journey with me to explore the unknown and discover the unexpected. This is Abroad Abroad. The adventure starts now. These days, when Westerners think of the Middle East, the thoughts are usually pretty grim, especially when it comes to the lives of women in Muslim countries. A lot of people generally assume women are religiously and culturally oppressed. So I went to Oman, a conservative yet open country, to find out what the lives of Muslim women are really like. The most conservative women in the country are the Bedouins, who practice Wahhabism, an ultra-conservative form of Islam. In the Wahiba Sands, I met Samta al-Ajmi, who still lives like her foremothers did hundreds of years ago. And like her predecessors, Samta has no idea of exactly how old she is. She has no idea the one I'm yeah, yeah. Do you know how old you are now? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> The life of a Bedouin woman is restricted to the home, and often they don't even meet their husbands before they're actually married. How did you meet your husband then? In the sands, crossing? Really? Did he know, had he seen you before? Really? He just showed up yeah. one day and was like, I would like to marry you. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> Get to step in. It's like a range marriage, you know? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In Oman, a burqa refers to the traditional face mask of the Bedouin women and must be worn at all times outside of the home. Have you always worn the mask? <laughs> I know it's about shame and you can't show your face, but how did it start? So no, before Muhammad? Of course before, of course before. So they've worn it before Islam? Exactly. exactly. Samta then offered me a burqa. Oh, on top, I see. I feel like there's going to be a camel exchange in a minute. You just have one little piece and exactly. it's fine. Exactly. You just can't see the whole face. That's right, yeah. When do girls start wearing these? When they start, when they marriage. Oh. Oh. I would totally do it. It's a Bedouin nose job. What a good. I get to be it. And so much less expensive, I'm sure. But I wasn't done yet. I was about to go full Bedouin. Despite the ultra-conservatism in the community, the Bedouins aren't judgmental of how others dress. What do you think of, like, Western women and how they dress? I like the best. Yeah, I have my own culture where the Bedouins can dress. They have their own culture. I like the people who are happy. Yeah, and they're our guests, you know. I like the people. I like the people who come to them and tell them, hello and hello. We say, welcome to those guests, you know. Huh? Yeah. But I wondered if life for non-Bedouin Omani women was any less restrictive. So I met up with my new friend Fatin to talk about it. Fatin is 26 years old and, like most unmarried women in Oman, lives with her family. She's also university educated, has a professional job, and has traveled internationally. How do you date in Oman? In Oman, we don't date. So how do you like decide if you're going to get married? We have like a period uh, called yeah. engagement. We decide in that period if we're um, compatible. Yes and write for each other, then we decide to get married. So when you're engaged, are you allowed to sit alone with the man? Not alone. We Never. We sit alone. We have to have someone uh, with us. Always a chaperone, yeah. hey? Yes. The guy and the girl, they can't touch. Ah. That's not allowed. Until, the until you're married. Yes. Gotcha. Do you want to get married right now, or do you want to wait a little bit? I can wait. OK. It doesn't depend on me. It depends on the guy. You have to wait to get a guy's family to say, I yes. want to... I want this girl. Okay, no offense, even, Oman. Even okay. <laughs> Fatin is amazing. People in Muscat are nuts if they're not calling you every night <laughs> saying, you need to meet my son. If your husband's like, you know, just lost his mind, can you get a divorce? You, and you're just like, I don't want to be with this guy anymore? Yes, you can. First, you, didn't, you couldn't make uh, things work between you. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the person from his family and person from your family comes with you guys and sit with you guys and try to fix the problem. If they can't fix it, then it's okay to abolish the marriage. It's not as simple as it sounds. If their ex gets remarried, they lose their children. If the mother uh, remarried, 
remarriage, um, the kids go to the father, uh, uh, even uh. if he remarried. What do you think of like what the rest of the world thinks of like Islam right now? Whenever who comes here who doesn't know anything about uh, Islam or Oman, they find it different and they feel accepting more of uh, these cultures. And uh, I guess it's eye-opening for them. Yeah. Yeah. They find it different. It's definitely, it's been such a nice experience here so far. Everyone's so welcoming and warm. Yeah. And the food, <laughs> amaze balls. What I saw in Oman was conservative traditionalism, more modern traditionalism, and then, remember Nawal al Houdi, the rising international face of Oman? Yes, she dresses modestly, but some of her designs, like a lacy see through abaya, could be considered downright scandalous. At the end of the day, women's lives in the Middle East, while different from our own, is just as varied. On the next episode of Abroad Abroad, you think you know England? It's just like the States with a funny accent, right? Wrong. Here's a few things tourists do that really peeve off the locals.